Hi, my name is Sharon Gwen. I retired as a nurse and jumped into painting with both feet. I love the medium of watercolor, many other mediums as well, but watercolor is very special. So I put this video together so that maybe if you had some free time, you could grab a brush, your watercolors, and have a lot of fun. Well, welcome to my crab painting. This is my palette, my brushes. I have a five brushes that I usually use. Two of those are very thick and watery. They hold great water. You need good watercolor brushes that hold a lot of water. This one here is for detail work, that little skinny one there. I love my palette. It's a mess right now, but I love the grays that I can get from those colors left behind. Here's my water, so I'm gonna reconstitute all that paint in my palette as well as what's in the center there and I will mix up a background paint. Um, but the grays that you can get from leftover paint is so beautiful even with acrylic. So don't waste anything, I don't, and so add your water. Right now I'm going to draw a composition of three crabs, on, one on top of the other. More of a horizontal look so far um, in the details, so I'm going to need some vertical lines in there in the composition to make it interesting. Um, so we have a vertical and a horizontal composition going on. How I'll do the uh, vertical lines is I'll just put in some seaweed or something that comes up through the crabs in, um, in the composition. Hopefully some seaweed coming over as well as behind the crabs. So as I draw that in, I'm just doing a little detail work with my pencil. And uh, don't have to do everything, but the paint will... Um, be starting on the background first. I'm going to wet the whole canvas part, including the crabs. So I got to be careful when I drop this paint in. This is called wet into wet painting. And as I do that, I'll add maybe another little bit of yellow color or something and drop that in to change the color around. Let the colors mix on the canvas itself on the watercolor paper. Um, put some yellow over here. There we go. And you can see how that just flows. That's the magic of watercolor just beautiful and what falls into the crab i'm not going to worry about it it's going to dry very very light much lighter than you see and um, if there's an area where the dark green moves into the crab too too much i'll just blot that out you'll see that in just a minute so i'm putting down my background and filling in all the spaces of the background um, and i'm letting it flow sometimes over the seaweed i'll go back and and now i'm going to just blot some areas where i don't want that dark to show through uh, because as I paint the cra crabs, I don't, uh, I don't want to have this blottiness coming into the crab. You can see my paper is really wet. Now when it kind of gets dull, I take my palette knife and I scrub into it. I make shapes part of the uh, seaweed, giving it a little texture. Moving that paint around while it's just barely dry, you can scrape that paint off and get some great textures. Now I'm going to again wet into wet. I'm putting water down just on the crab itself, not on the background, and I'm going to flow in some color into that. That's what's so awesome about watercolor. It is just so fun to see that paint flow and move, and then you can add other colors over that as it's wet. Um, I will probably do that. You can see there's a crab on the bottom there, too. I haven't quite painted yet. I'm sorry it's out of focus there. Um, had a small area for my screen. But if you look at the paint I'm putting down, that orange, it is really, it seems really dark. I thought for sure it was too much, but I do realize that watercolor dries a lot lighter. So as you put the colors in, you just got to know what that color is going to look like in about 10-15 minutes when it's dry and so this is not a problem it's going to lighten up quite a bit um, so then I'm going to probably add some pink it's a hot pink that I really like uh, it's called opera and I'm just going to define some shapes that way by just dropping in some opera into the colors into the edges where I'm, I think there's going to be more heat or it's a very warm color it's beautiful and so I'm dropping in opera. I'm letting that paint flow. Uh, that yellow there on that middle crab, I'll work with in just a little bit. I'll go ahead and paint this lower one real fast. And uh, if I were to do this not in slow motion, we'd be here for quite a while. So I've sped things up 
There we go, we're dropping in those colors again on the lower crab. Isn't that beautiful how that flows? And the background is already now dry. You can see how that those colors flowed into each other. Almost looks like an underwater scene. And I'm just gonna continue to add color to the, the legs of the crabs. Um, keeping it light, when you do watercolor, you always wanna go from light to dark. Unlike uh, other mediums, it is very particular. You wanna leave your lights and um, so I'm going to start the legs in a light opera color and then I'll start working in other colors later when I get ready to paint uh, more detail. I don't want to overdo the heaviness of the legs and make them prominent. Here we go. And I'm going to lift while it's wet. That one brush can sap up a little water there. I'm going to lift up a little color and water just to help me define even more shapes. You can see it lightens up when you do that a little bit. If it, if it were wetter, it would lighten up even more. But it started to dry. Now I'm going to put in the, um, the seaweed, and I'm going to paint where that goes. And it seems really dark, but it will dry a little bit lighter. You'll see that. Just doing a little design of my seaweed and where I've scratched in there on the bottom, you can see the lines that appear automatically because I have caused the paper to have a little etching there so the paint will flow into that etching and make its own lines. That's another neat thing about watercolor. You can uh, do some interesting textures into it by just dropping some rice or some salt into wet paint. Let it sit and absorb and dry and you'll have some interesting shapes and textures in your painting. I probably could have done that for for the crabs as well because they're not their shells are kind of rough and edgy. But I'm keeping it pretty simple because uh, I don't want to hear, have you here all day watching this. I want you to be painting. So I'm putting in my, uh, my little design of seaweed, painting behind the crab and trying to get everything filled in so where it, it shapes meet each other. It's important to kind of link things in your painting and not have something floating without being linked to something. So I'm um, doing my seaweed. I'll go back in again with my palette knife and rough up some edges. And now I'm defining uh, the crab shapes and the, the legs and adding color. That seemed a little dark to me. So I'm putting some water on it to lift it a little bit. I'm just gonna start working on uh, forming shapes by adding more color. Now my paints have, have um, excuse me, my crabs have dried. So I can go in now with wet paint and I won't get any blossoms. Uh, that's never a problem if it's dry painting. Uh, when the surface is dry and you come in with water, there's not a problem. I've sped that process along. You can see the shapes have been defined by other colors and um, I mostly used um, some blues I think and uh, right now I'm actually putting in <laughs> some purple. I think that the purple pops and it gives it an interesting because it's a complementary color. Um, it's very um, very light and warm. It's a warm purple so uh, it's not popping out obnoxiously. But as I add the purple, I'm just doing it in different spots to just lend interest color-wise to the creatures that I've painted. Um, here and there, uh, how do I make that choice? I don't know. It's just intuition on where to put it, how much to put it. Sometimes when you add something like this, you can overdo it. I tend to overdo shapes sometimes, and so I have to watch myself to not do that. Kind of like... Uh, the saw goes, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. So um, right now I'm putting those purples in. I'll also put some, almost a cerulean blue in here. I think that that'll even push those crabs a little bit more. I tend to push things. You can notice the white there. What I did with that is I, um, I sprinkled some white on a toothbrush 
some uh, correction ink and I wanted to have some spots on my crabs to bring interest and now I'm actually painting uh, a dark dark bluish color and I thought oh I don't know if I should do that it might be too much but actually I think it adds if it adds I continue to do it and I think it did I think it pushed the painting even further made it made it interesting and the lines that I'm putting with my paint just is a graphic effect that I like. I tend to do that. Uh, again, it's just a little bit of an intuition of, of making the painting interesting. I'm gonna put in some little details that might come in an ocean scene, underwater details. That little speckle of white that I put on the crabs is just enough. If I didn't like it, I could dab it off real quick, but it helped uh, form the eyes as well as the, the shell being, having a sense of uh, crustiness. This yellow, I decided to put on the last minute just to push those colors a little bit more. I tend to like to sit and look at something and then push it even further if I can. Sometimes that can be good, sometimes it can make a mess. But you see how the yellow just fades and it's a beautiful process. So that is watercolor, the magic of watercolor, just knowing when to put the paint down, being careful. Hope you enjoyed it.